includes bursaries, it includes scholarships that a lot of people here aren't getting. Well, no one here is getting because there's absolutely no funding for them to even begin to hand out those things. So I think that a fashion council would be huge for people who are just trying to start right here. And the last one, what are some ways the federal government could help uh, us in regards of getting our industry back on our feet? Because, you know, we all tend to complain, the government's not doing this, so, you know, now it's time to stop complaining and say, you know, we want this done. If they finally hear us out, what will we present to them and say, okay, we want, uh, you know, we want this much amount of funding, we want this uh, amount, amount of uh, support, because as, we, as Megan had mentioned, a lot of the other councils, they, their main agenda is to prepare the next generation of fashion designers, fashion innovators, and uh, they're, they're very big on scholarships, uh, grants, and, um, and charities as well. So, um, so yeah, what are other different uh, programs or you know, things that we should probably um, ask the federal government to kind of help us with this council? Um, there's actually in Australia they have they have the council there. The fashion industry in Australia is amazing. They're constantly um, doing a lot of couture atelier and they're promoting their younger designers very well. One thing that they have other than a council is they actually have a dedicated mall or plaza in Sydney that's for only for small designers or for brand new graduated designers. And then once you become established, you have your own boutique, then you move out of that mall and you give that space to somebody who's new and who's graduated again. So even if we had something like that, where we had one location where you could see all the new talent coming in and helping support them that way, even in the smallest way, that would definitely help us out a lot as well. Um, I'm going to add to that. Um, however, it's in Toronto, so we miss out on a lot. Um, in Montreal, they used to have a La Trois Creative, which again, that unfortunately closed a few years ago, but that was a um, co-op. Um, so what it was like, it was a huge building that exactly, there was about 10 by 10 or 15 by 10 rooms where designers could go and work. They would pay, I think it was $500 a month. They were allowed two employees. They also had workspaces, tables, machines that they would in be included in the $500 a month. If we could have something like that in Ottawa, it'd be awesome because not everyone can afford the $2,000 to $3,000 price point of a storefront first thing on Dalhousie when they come out of school. And if you're looking in the market, I mean, you're looking upwards to 7000 to own a small boutique. So I mean, they need to get a lot of designers in there to even make you. And like I said, with Nordstrom, Simon, H&M, all these big stores coming in, like that's eating up the revenue that they're getting. And I mean, if there's not going to be any boutiques left, like really, designers are going to have to start selling online or really self-promoting themselves or, I don't know, come up with a new innovative way, start Tupperware parties for fashion, I guess, because you're going to have to go knocking at doors to be like, hey, do you want to see my stuff? Because honestly, I mean, that's what it's going to come to if everything keeps closing and no one will wear clothing. <laughs> All right, so we're going to open up the floor for any questions. So I think somebody had had a hand up on that end. So Regularize 